It was a quiet summer morning, and the five carpenter children were still asleep in their beds. Minutes after their mother left to run a quick errand, one of the older girls woke to find a naked man barricading their living room, wielding a pitchfork. She ran to her room and locked the door. Nine-year-old Ashley told the others to run. Two of the girls got out a window, went next door, and called 911. The attacker, Jonathan David Bruce, moved in on the two younger children. He stabbed and killed nine-year-old Ashley, and then killed her brother, seven-year-old John William, as he lay sleeping in his parents' bed. Deputies arrived at the carpenter's house, and when Bruce lunged at them with the pitchfork, they shot him. Jonathan Bruce was dead. Through here, and it come out right here. You can still see uh, it. Two years later, and 15-year-old Anna still has the scars from that horrible day. He had the pitchfork turned the opposite way, so it was going into my legs instead of in my stomach. Bruce stabbed Anna eight times, but miraculously, she survived. We just had that memory in our head that him chasing us still and everything, so we wanted to get a picture that he was really gone. Keeping Ashley and John alive that brings healing, you know. If we would have just shut them out and blocked that part of our life off, that would have left a big hole, a big emptiness. An emptiness Tiffany and John Carpenter prayed would be filled. When we talked a year ago, the Carpenters believed their prayers had been answered. Tiffany was pregnant with twins. But sadly, she miscarried and came close to dying herself. I was hemorrhaging. I could hear everything that was going on. I wasn't feeling anything, and I wasn't afraid. But she recovered, and not long after, she was pregnant again. One miracle, she says, followed by two. Again, she was pregnant with twins. <laughs> she gave birth to a boy and a girl, <laughs> Josiah William and Ashriel. <laughs> taking part of their names from their brother and sister, John and Ashley, who they will never know. Not a day goes by that I don't happen to think about them. Or, you know, what's amazing is, is even in our little children's eyes, the baby's eyes, I see Ashley sometimes. I see characteristics that John had in Josiah. And uh, you see little traits that it's like, so they're still living on to, to a sin. They'll never take the place of them, but at least we have little ones in the house again making noise and everything. <laughs> The last two years have brought other big changes to the Carpenter family. In addition to the twins, the family now lives in a new house, right next door to their old house, where the nightmare happened. There's days that you look over and you remember uh, them running out and feeding their chickens or doing something funny or whatever. You just, those moments do hit you like a, like you said, a tidal wave. The Carpenters say an enduring faith in God has given them and their children the strength to deal with the grief. And they know that there's a heaven and know that they'll see Ashley and John again. And then in turn, they know there's a hell too and know where Jonathan David Bruce is. And, you know, so they, they left it in the Lord's hands and they're amazing. A simple promise allows the carpenters to go on. It's the promise of new life, even in the face of death. I'm not miserable because I know where they're at, and I know they're in better hands than, than my hands, and a better place than this world is, even in, and just look forward to the day that we'll all be together again. Monty Francis, KC24 News.